Whether it's ancient combat or modern sport, winning is what it's all about. But how do you win? This man has learned the hard way. Now, he's ready to show you. We're at the extreme edge of law enforcement. To left! Against determined criminals with high-powered weapons. Normal police procedures won't work. To right! It's time to call in special weapons and tactics. SWAT. This time on Conquest, we find out how to win at Urban Operations. This way, guys, gather around. You're in the middle of winter, in the middle of nowhere. Welcome to Darcy, the Direct Action Resource Center. There's no welcome signs here, no advertising. This is a closed area, because your challenge this time is to learn how to win in a situation that police officers face every day across America. Intervention against armed criminals and hostage rescue. You'll be taught tactics, techniques, and the use of real equipment, and then I will lead you on a simulated operation. You have to work together, relying absolutely on each other, because that is the only way to learn how to win as a SWAT team. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Ready. Let's go. Good. Come on. Right. All right, this is uh, John Hickman, director of Darcy. He's the main man. How's everyone? You're going to like to welcome you all to Direct Action Resource Center. You guys are going to have a unique opportunity over the next few days to do some things you've probably only seen on TV. Most civilians probably won't ever be exposed to a facility like this, to this type of equipment, or this type of training. We'll be wearing a two-piece uniform in trendy tactical black. This tactical vest will hold equipment vital for a raid, such as ammunition and a radio. We will also need this heavy body armor, leather boots, and of course, weapons. Three of us will carry the MP5SD submachine gun. It has single, short burst, and full auto modes. The rest will be armed with the new carbine of the special forces, the M4. Each of us will also carry a Glock 17 as a secondary backup weapon. Teamwork begins right now, checking that each other's equipment is in the right place. That's because the placement of our equipment has been thought out for the quickest access when under pressure. We must sacrifice comfort for performance. All right, guys, put your chairs against the wall. Sometimes urban operations training forces you to go against your own instincts. Military training and basic common sense teaches you to move sideways, make yourself as small a target as possible, like this. But SWAT teams wear body armor. If you turn sideways, you're exposing your arm and the side of your body, the weakest, most unarmored areas. So you literally square up to your opponent and have your weapon directly in front of you. And this elbow here is doing me no good at all. It's a chicken wing. If I come around the corner, that's the first thing a bad guy's gonna see. So I square up, I crouch down, and I tuck in. In urban operations, you're either hot or you're not. So for these guys, the level of training approaches the obsessive, especially with the weapons. You work with them until your reactions are immediate, your physical memory is perfect, and you know where every part of your kit is on your body. Rifle mag, pistol mag, compression bandage, radio, gas grenade, shotgun, pistol, and of course, shades. Now it's time to get down to business on the range. John gives a quick review of our primary weapon, the Heckler & Koch MP5, fitted with a suppressor to reduce the noise created by firing live ammunition. It may sound like they're shooting BB guns, but these are real 9mm bullets. The targets look close, and they are. In SWAT shootouts, called close-quarter battles, the suspect is rarely more than 20 feet away. Oh, I love it. I love to shoot. It felt good. It didn't kick that much. One technique is practiced constantly. It's called a transition. Now, all weapons run out of ammunition, all weapons malfunction. You may not have time to reload or to clear the weapon. So, when you hear that click, you transition. You may only use it one time in your life, but that one time could save your life. Get on target, this is Tim Williams, supervisor of the Amarillo SWAT team and a 23-year veteran in law enforcement. 
He'll also be instructing our team in SWAT training, beginning with the five movements necessary to successfully use a semi-automatic pistol. One, two, three is out on target. You're just kind of looking. You're looking to the suspect's hands. You're not engaging. Four is sight picture. Five, squeeze the trigger. After my first five misses, Tim helped me out and I was able to knock a few down. They told me to keep the target kind of out of you and uh, concentrate on your aiming. Even the way you move is different. Seems unnatural. The weapon leads you. That front gun sight is like a third eye. So, you move swiftly and smoothly, always maintaining body position and aim. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That way, a team can work together as a compact and interdependent unit. Creating the discipline necessary for success. Before our team can practice their new moves inside a building, they must first open the door. If a bad guy is inside, they might not be welcome. A lot of people call this a little pig, as in little pig, little pig let me in. A master key, uh, what it is, is a shotgun. We've got a special round, a breaching round, uh, usually some kind of powdered metal or uh, composite that will come apart. Yep. It won't blow any, any hard pieces or secondary missiles into the room. It'll, it'll knock a hole through the door. It'll push the lock out in effect. Other methods of door entry really hammer the point home, like the ram and the Thor's hammer. It's time to get inside and learn the basics of room clearance. The level of trust in a SWAT team is astonishing. Each of the team has a specific responsibility. As the first through the door, my responsibility is to cover this corner and this sector of the room. When I come in, even if I see a guy in that corner, I have to leave him because he is the responsibility of my number two. I have to trust him absolutely with my life because this is what happens if I don't. Sean? You're going to be number one. This is your sector. You're number two, Michael. This is your area of responsibility. I'm going to be in here as the bad guy. I want you to come in and clear the room. Understood? Okay. Okay, let's go. You think I'm dead? Yes. Did you get me? Oh, yeah. So you think I'm dead? Well, I'm not. You are. Both of you. Look. Oh, man. Listen. I'm in his sector. I'm his responsibility. Even if you see me, you have to trust him to do his job because he is trusting you to do your job, which is to clear that corner. Nothing else. You're both dead. Out. There is one right way to clear a room and a hundred wrong ways. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, look at this gap. OK, you left your team behind. You only move as fast as you can accurately shoot. You only move as fast as you need to control the situation. You make a gap like that, you expose yourself, and these guys can't back you up, OK? Keep together, really tight, really tight stack. All right, back you go. Get down! All right, do you think you got me? Yeah. OK, where was your shot? I don't have a shot. He's right in my line of fire. Right, look, look where you are. Look at your position. You've got to hug that wall. This is your sector, but you've got to hug the wall. Otherwise, you cross his line of fire. What if this weapon malfunctions? What if you miss? He doesn't have a shot. You've got to keep to your position. Go back. Get out! Get out! By endless repetition, Get out! our guys are starting to get it right. Our recruits are starting to learn about teamwork. How they must work as an integrated unit if they are to survive against bad guys who don't play by any rules. Each member in the line has a certain responsibility that must be carried out to ensure the safety of the whole squad. The number two position is really difficult. This guy in front of me relies on me absolutely. When he's ready, he gives me the nod. When I'm ready, I'll give him a squeeze. He'll move immediately. I have to be right there with him. Right clear! This method makes sure you never enter a room alone. Got the door. Because that's the golden rule of SWAT operations. Right clear. right clear! All clear! Our team are practicing all the many variations of room clearance. In this one, there is a half wall that could conceal a bad guy. Deep cover problem! Moving!
The operator has to constantly observe and assess the situation. Police! Don't move! Is that guy raising a gun? Or a law enforcement ID? Walk this way the police car, nice and slow. SWAT teams often encounter unarmed civilians who may or may not be a threat. Whether armed or not, everybody must be regarded as a danger until neutralized. And if they do not obey a command to get on the ground, there are ways of persuading them. Jeff Martone is a tactical strength instructor at Darcy. He's showing us how to control a suspect using your forearm and body momentum. Coming in, I know he doesn't have any, uh, any weapons in his hands. I'm coming in, drop the muzzle. <laughs> You just keep moving. It's called the half spear, and it feels like a cross check in hockey. Oh. If a suspect doesn't comply, it's time to take them down. Half spear them against a wall, oh. knee them in the groin, throw them down, and cuff them. I've suited up so our team can go all out and do their worst. Ideally, all confrontations with suspects should end like this, handcuffed and without a shot being fired. Get down, get down. In this potentially deadly situation, no. there is a standard rule. Everybody gets cuffed. Give me your hand. This may be a hostage, an innocent bystander, or he could be a criminal trying to escape. Until he is cuffed, he remains a threat. This is called a 5% shot, because only 5% of that target is a good shot. The gunman's head. If I miss that, I risk hitting the hostage. This is a SWAT operator's nightmare. And to train for it, he uses special targets. Here, the grey targets are the only ones you want to hit. Sometimes, it gets really difficult. Both of you drop your weapons! Hey, no problem, I got it. So everything's okay. One of these guys seems to be apprehending a burglar. Both men are armed, so both of them remain a threat. So you never let your guard down, because both could be bad guys. Going hot? Coming up, we lock, load, and let loose. It is essential to rehearse every possible eventuality. To do this realistically, SWAT teams use simunitions. Simunitions are like paintballs, but can be shot through real weapons that have specially fitted barrels. They're not real bullets, but they can still hurt if you get hit by one. We need to know what simunitions feel like against an unarmored portion of the body. So I'm going to shoot Michael. Going hot. The pain's starting to set in right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel good. <laughs> After all of our training, I'm ready to lead my team on our first mission. Inside this specially designed shoot house are a network of corridors and rooms. Somewhere are targets of bad guys and one hostage. We must breach the door, clear each room, eliminate each bad guy, whilst not shooting the hostage. Our first effort as a united team is a bit disorganized and frantic. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. 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 Helmets, masks off. Okay. Let's go and find out what we did wrong. Okay. So who took this room? I did. And you too. Okay. Let's go and have a look. So show me your position. So I came here. I couldn't see anything, and I wasn't sure what is over here. Okay, so you weren't sure that you were backed up? Right. Yeah? I couldn't see. I mean, I could see over here, but I couldn't see back here. Okay, so you have to keep visuals at all times. So as you come into the room, this is where you want to be. Yeah, all right? Okay. And you had it, it was a double room. There was another room beyond it. So okay. what did you do? We stacked back up, and I felt squeezed. Went right back in. My we shot both of them. Now, this guy was not holding a gun. He looked as though he was holding a gun. He could have been holding a cup of coffee, he could have been holding a, an ID. Yeah. All right, this guy is seriously dead. So even with the gas masks on, we have to be absolutely sure that the target is a target. Because if he's not, we're not doing our job, okay? okay. All right, let's have a look at the next room. All right, who went in here? I did. But the problem was I went in alone. You're on your own. I was on my own. Okay, so this was the next error we made. If your weapon wasn't in exactly the right position, then he could have got a shot off before you did. If you'd have been hit, you would have been completely at his mercy. That's why we absolutely have to be sure that we do not enter a room without someone behind us. And I have to say, it's your responsibility. All right, next room. The further we got down the hallway, the better we did. Taking out other bad guys with great accuracy. We all did pretty well, apart from two mistakes. Shooting at the wrong target, shooting at an unarmed civilian. Second mistake, one person goes in alone. Both of those could have meant serious consequences for all of us. And that is why we have to train and train and prepare and plan and keep training. Because tonight, you're gonna be doing the same thing in this 6,100 square foot shoot house, but now you're gonna have real people in there shooting back at you. So stress level is going to be up. It'll make it as about realistic as you can. We'll also be using live diversion devices. In other words, there'll be a loud explosion. And you'll get to see what a, a SWAT team actually does in, in real life. All right, nice. We only have a few hours to work out our kinks. So we try out a few different environments to practice our teamwork and communication. The guys we're up against are the real deal the Benton SWAT team from Arkansas. And they're not about to let a group of novices get the better of them. When we return, our final challenge and the most realistic shootout I've ever experienced. It's midnight and the time has come for our final challenge. Somewhere inside this building are six bad guys and one hostage. All of our training has amounted to this moment. We line up. Brian places the muzzle of his shotgun against the lock. And we're off. Nothing behind the front door. Brad and Sean encounter a suspect. They tell him to get on the ground, and he complies with no shots fired. So far, so good. A blast comes out of nowhere, and we are all shaken. Correct. Mike and Jackie burst into the next room. It seems empty, but we must clear it to make sure. To right! A bad guy pulls a pistol on Brian and Sean, and they let him have it. Go, go! Suddenly, a gunman appears in front of me, and we exchange fire. I'm hit in the arm, but he goes down. To left! Just as in our exercise, Brad charges in alone at one suspect, so doesn't see the second and takes a bullet in the back. Mike follows him in to eliminate the shooter hiding behind the board. Two left! Sean and Brian enter the final room and all hell breaks loose. Sean shoots a figure in the chair, but it's a trap. It's only a mannequin propped up to draw away their attention. The bad guy is actually in the corner using a hostage as cover. The hostage dives to the floor. Sean takes a hit in the eye. There's more shooting, and finally the bad guy collapses backwards. I keep the hallway covered as we make our exit.
What a rush. It's all over in two exhausting minutes, but did we hit the hostage? Did we complete our mission? I was trying to keep it slow and steady for all you guys, and uh, I wasn't expecting a, a guy with a gun to come out into the hall, and he uh, winged my arm here. So, uh, Tim, big question. Did we get the hostage? Did I bring the good news first? Bring the good news. The good news is accuracy was very good. You hit the targets you were shooting at. Movement was good. Communication was excellent. The hostage did take one shot to the arm. And the realistic thing about it is if you take a shot in the face, you lose a team member, but you still save the hostage, that's your goal. But overall, I thought it was an excellent run. Now, if you think SWAT teams are a bunch of guys who run into a room and spray bullets around, well, think again. They have the most difficult and dangerous job in law enforcement. They have to sort out the bad guys, rescue the innocents, and keep cool enough to be able to tell the difference. We've come to respect them hugely, as we've learned how to win at Urban Operations.